Hey everybody, Anthony here from Crazy Tech Lab. Hope you're all doing okay out there. And it is finally here. We finally got it. The brand new Fantex Evolve Shift XT, the brand new mini ITX case from Fantex. And it is of course the crazy one that had this vertical expansion feature that we saw in the video that I released a few year, a few days ago, a few days, a few weeks even, it was quite a while ago now. Um, but this is a super, super interesting feature, very, very rare for any kind of expansion to be offered in any case, never mind Mini ITX. And the benefit there, of course, is that you can fit fans in the roof or even fans and a radiator giving you more clearance in the roof to install extra cooling, or you can just have it in super compact mode like I've got in my silver sample here, also available in black. We will be talking about the specifications, just what's actually going on inside, checking out how you actually build a PC inside of the uh, Evolve Shift XT, performing some cooling testing at the end to see how well it performs in cooling some modern hardware, and finally coming to some conclusions, as well as looking at the brand new Fantex Revolt SFX power supply. This is the 750 watt model and also seeing how you actually install in an all-in-one liquid cooler in the form of the Glacier 1 240MP that we've got down there as well. And also thanks to Fantex for sending me over some of its fantastic T30 fans as well. So lots to get through in this video today and I think it's fair to say that for me at least this is the Mini ITX case that I've been most looking forward to in 2022 so far. Definitely more so than the uh, NZXT H1 version 2, which of course was more of a revamp of the original NZXT H1, fixing that issue with the riser cable and a whole bunch of other stuff, improving cooling. You can see a link to my review of that fantastic case in a banner up above. Obviously, we've recently had a new Mini ITX case from Fractal Design as well, which I'll be looking at very, very soon. But I think given the uh, Shift uh, XT's credentials with that expanded volume uh, with the whole roof of the case kind of lifting up that's just a super super interesting feature i love that kind of flexibility in a mini uh, mini itx case so very very interesting video for all you small form factor fans out there today so talking about specifications i've got my uh, press release of Doom here with all the information on it and looking at the pricing in Europe we're looking at $170 for the case bare bones as it is. Um, it will be available only in bare bones for the time being but Fantex has told me that it will be available with I believe these two uh, gubbins here so the Revolt SFX power supply and the Glacier 1 240MP all-in-one liquid cooler so you will be able to buy it as a bundle hopefully for cheaper than all those parts combined or pre-installed with the case. I think either that, either that or as a bundle, Fantex hasn't been too specific about that. I don't think it might actually be pre-installed. I'd like to see it pre-installed because that was a really great feature of the NZXTH1, having those two things pre-installed in the case, all tied it away neatly. So all you need to do is just drop in your hardware and away you go. That's a really cool feature. Getting back to the pricing, digressing a bit there, 170 euros in Europe, obviously. Um, 160 pounds here in the UK where I am. This is for both black and silver versions they are the same price. In the US, you're looking at $170. So reasonably expensive for a mini ITX case, but we are dealing with Fantex here. So you've got these gorgeous aluminium panels on the outside. Thankfully, they are all perforated this time. So they're not 
closed panels like we've seen on a lot, a lot of other cases, like the shift included, which did hamper thermals. That's why I cut very similar vents to these into the panels uh, in the case of my original shift and, and, and Fantex then uh, did the same with the Shift 2 to boost cooling. Um, I think this is a great idea. I, I would have preferred to have seen it like this instead of just the sealed panels, which I don't think would have done anything for cooling at all. Um, so good move there, hopefully from Fantex. And um, price-wise, obviously you're looking at something that is a lot more expensive than the likes of the NR200P from Cooler Master, but this is a much more premium looking and feeling case than the NR200P. The NR200P is a great starting point, for uh, Mini ITX fans, yes, you can fit an all-in-one liquid cooler or even custom liquid cooling inside, but the materials and obviously the case um, as you get it aren't as lavish as what, as what you've got here. You've got an expandable case, lots of aluminium going on. It's going to be more expensive. So in terms of the other features, as I've already mentioned, bare bones out of the box. It will in future be uh, including some other components too. And um, triple slot compatibility for graphics cards as well as 324 millimeters of length space but it's great to see triple slot compatibility for graphics cards that's obviously obviously something that the nzxt h1 lacked um, i did have a few comments in the original video that i did of the launch of this case asking whether it can be mounted vertically um, it, it kind of nearly can out of the box there are some uh, case feet Actually, yeah, they would be on the bottom, wouldn't they? Um, there, there's some clip-in case feet. I say clip-in because they are easily removable, but what you won't be able to do, and we'll look at, look, look at this in a bit more detail in a minute, is have the case sat vertically. The rear of the case here is here, but what you don't have are the kind of the big standoff section at the bottom to allow the cables to come out and kind of flow out at an angle. There isn't enough space to do that out of the box, but definitely moddable if you wanted to um, have this case sat vertically. And if it is vertically, it's way shorter than the NZXT H1. It's actually surprisingly small. It's smaller than I thought it was gonna be in person. Um, I've got a Raging Tech Ophion Evo sat just behind the camera there, and it is a lot, a lot shorter than that. It looks to be more compact as well, so I'm super excited to be building a PC inside this case. So all that's left to do really is uh, take a bit more of an in-depth look at the specifications. I'll bring up a table on the screen for you to have a look at it and um, then we can go ahead, check out the interior, how that expanded uh, roof section works, build a PC inside, run some cooling tests and come to some conclusions. So let's crack on. First though, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and it means a lot to have your support so I can continue doing these videos and get more attention and hopefully get some sponsors and all that kind of thing. So don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. It means a lot to have your support and just helps to get me noticed. I always love hearing about what you guys think of my videos and also which rigs you're running at the moment. What do you think of the Fantex Evo Shift XT? Uh, do let me know at the end when you finish watching the whole of the video and um, to see what you think of the case do leave a comment and also don't forget to check out the links in the description below because I've got links to all my social media accounts on there you definitely want to check those out especially Instagram because that's where I'll be posting a lot of the eye candy from this case and future reviews and hardware that I'll be looking at and also the case will be uh, posted up in the link below as part of a, an affiliate link so if you click on that link to buy the case you or any of the hardware that you've seen in this video you will be helping me out on the channel so Let's crack on. Okay, so let's take a look at the specifications then. And I just thought I'd flick through a couple of pages of the reviewer's guide. And what we've got here is the limitations for the CPU cooler height and also the graphics card. So we've got a three slot 62 millimeter depth limit, 324 uh, millimeters. Um, yeah, they've actually put centimetres there <laughs> uh, rather than millimetres, definitely millimetres. Uh, 324 millimetres that should be and uh, 147 uh, centimetres wide, uh, sorry, 144 millimetres wide. Even I'm believing those uh, those mistakes now. So the CPU cooler height, as we mentioned earlier, is 72 millimetres, which is reasonable, but you're not going to be able to fit any kind of tower cooler in there. It's going to be low profile only unless you go for an all-in-one liquid cooler. So flicking down to that then, and we can see a similar setup to what the uh, the system that we'll actually be building in this video. And um, this is with the uh, Fantex cooler, of course, but you can see where the PSU is. You can see how the 
uh, liquid cooler sits on top and if we flick down here you can see how everything kind of goes together inside the case in these renders so you should be able to flick up that top panel with the all-in-one liquid cooler without uh, removing the fans and radiator with most all-in-one liquid coolers but it does depend on the length of the tubes so you might want to pause some of these sections in the video so you can actually see uh, what is actually going on and um, it's just going to be a bit more uh, bit more detail than I want to go to in the video uh, just because I don't want to uh, bore you. Uh, in fact, I've probably done that already. But as you can see, there's uh, a, a few kind of small places to do cable management. Um, you definitely want to be uh, keeping cable clutter to a minimum, uh, perhaps getting a PSU with shortened cables or getting some custom cables made um, if your uh, wallet allows. Obviously, they're a bit more expensive. Um, the front panel, as you can see, is actually under a... Uh, lift up lid at the front of the case and there's a small um, I didn't actually notice it at first but there's a small lip um, just below the Fantex logo that's actually the power button and then beneath that you've got USB type C uh, USB 3 and two RGB uh, control buttons uh, for color and mode uh, in this area as well and then that flap just kind of drops down and hides all those ports so you don't need to look at them all the time um, it's relatively inaccessible uh, just because you've got to flip up that uh, that panel and you can't really do it with one hand it's a, it's a bit tricky to do so yeah just uh, just be just be wary of that if you do need to get at that port regularly it might just be worth having that flap left open so I am going to head down to the main specifications now then, but feel free to uh, pause this video anytime when we're kind of going through stuff. And uh, so we can look at some interesting uh, specifications here because they're split between the three different modes and in uh, compact configuration, you can see you still get that three slot support, but the case is, uh, is still, pretty, uh, still pretty compact. And here we've got comparisons between the uh, the Ghost S1, uh, the Ghost S1 with the top hat mods, and also the Dancase A4 as well. So some specifications there um, that you will probably be interested in. Obviously, the Shift XT is much larger by volume, looking at 13.5 litres for the compact configuration and nearly 16 litres for the Airboost configuration. Um, but you are getting the benefits of a customizable case um, and slightly more lavish externals um, I kind of like the the retro sort of industrial look of this case compared to just the average kind of flat aluminium panels but each to his own with that of course um, so some more specifications here then uh, compared to the Lian Li Q58 um, the Meshlicious <laughs> if I can actually say that um, and uh, the Encase M1 and Cooler Master N2, NR200P so in terms of litres, uh, the Cooler Master is actually larger. So that's the largest one there, 20 litres. And the 17 litres of the Shift XT is a couple of litres more than the Liani Q58 and the Mesh Licious. Uh, so yeah, it's a reasonably large case, but it's not the largest case of its type out there. Although the NR200P isn't a um, sandwich style, it's um, slightly different. So here are the full specifications then and uh, I will just um, just advise you to just kind of take a look at these, see if there's anything that's amiss or uh, anything that you need to pay attention to. I won't go into too much detail because um, otherwise I'll just be just reading off the, uh, off the specifications. So let's crack on. Okay, so I thought it would be fun to have a quick whip round the case and inside just to see how this thing actually works because uh, no amount of uh, me flying around the case or talking about specifications is going to do that and it's something that I was interested in as well. So this is the case in its fully vertical extended mode. As you can see, the uh, side mesh sections are fully visible. You've got pretty much the full extent of the uh, LED RGB display down there. And removing the top panel is pretty easy, um, or not that easy with one hand. I'll do my best here to get this off. So that's basically the panel. And the way that you set the height of this panel is done internally. So you've got these pins that secure in one of three notches down here. 
This pin obviously is forcing the panel to sit quite high on top of the case, whereas the bottom one allows the front and sides to kind of slip over the lower section of the case, uh, reducing the overall height. So from the front section then, this panel basically slides over the LED display, so reducing the, the width or the rather the height of the LED display as it goes down. And that basically means that the sides and the front of the case are kind of catered for when it comes to keeping the thing looking clean and tidy with no gaping holes or anything like that. The rear of the case is different though. So if we flip the case around, we have inserts working their magic at the rear of the case. So in the fully extended version, we have a large insert that goes in the back to basically plug the hole between the top of the chassis and where the top panel sits because obviously it's, it's riding up and there's nothing there to plug that the hole that will appear. In the medium height mode, you have a medium insert, which makes sense. And with the case fully lowered down, you remove all the inserts and this U-shape shell just sits directly on top of the lower section of the case. So that is all pretty simple. That is how it works and we can now get rid of the roof section and have a look at the rest of the case. Now, something I didn't get right about this case is the mesh panels. So these I thought would move up or down depending on where the upper panel was going to sit, but I got that wrong. Um, I'm sure some of you did as well, but basically while these do move up and down, as you can see here, they do move up and down. And uh, this is basically what they look, look like when they're fully removed. The only reason they move and are removable is to A, make installing your hardware into the case easier uh, because the case is fully dismantleable, which I'll do in a second, but also because they act like dust filters so you will want to clean them occasionally. They have absolutely nothing to do with the fact that the case roof section moves up or down. They actually stay fixed where they are, which is here. Um, there is a downside to that, which is that when you have the medium or fully vertical extended modes in the case, they don't quite cover the top section of the vents in the side panel. So if we get these vents back here again, so basically in the upper, the fully extended mode, especially pretty much the whole of this, this panel or most of this vent is unprotected by dust, um, is unprotected by dust filters, should I say. So Fantex has thankfully thought about that and it has included some stick-on dust filters for that very purpose and they also uh, stick into the lower section of the case uh, actually that way around uh, that would make more sense so it slots over that screw hole in the bottom so the reason why you need them in the roof is if you if you're in the fully compact mode uh, there are no fans in the roof or there is literally no no room in the roof to install them because you there's no room underneath the panel here for fans to sit underneath and there's obviously if the top roof panel is sitting straight on here there's no room for fans there either so because you might be lacking um, any kind of airflow coming out through the roof or positive airflow or whatever you want to call it they um, these filters should be really be used in the roof you don't have to but they should be just to prevent dust falling into the case from your surroundings so that is the roof section and dust filters spoken about. Now this is basically where you mount the radiator or your fans. There is space on here for 120 millimeter fans. There is space for 140 millimeter fans, but not for a 140 millimeter or 280 millimeter radiator in the roof, unfortunately. And Fantex specifies a depth of 60 millimeters for your fans and radiators. So again, you'll be limited at a radiator that is no more than uh, 35 millimeters thick to allow for standard 25 millimeter thick fans to be used. So I guess um, debatable what the best option there is. You could use slim fans and a 45 millimeter thick radiator that might work. Um, but yeah, it just uh, just depends on your own cooling requirements really. But probably only enough cooling here to water cool 
your CPU if you're going the custom route. Um, I guess you could use like a mid-range CPU, like a Core, a Core i5 12, 400, uh, 12400F or 12600K and maybe a mid-range um, graphics card. You might get away with that if you do some undervolting. But really, it's kind of a bit of a shame there isn't a slightly more cooling capacity here given that you can raise the roof up a fair way. Um, obviously, the alternative in a lot of other cases, the uh, Raging Tech Ophion Evo, for example, that I'm using in my current rig, I can, you can, if you use a slim radiator, fit a third, or should I say a second, 120 millimeter radiator in the bot in the base of the case, as well as a 241 in the roof. So it just increases the cooling capacity by 50%, which is obviously very useful. But as we'll get to in a minute, there isn't really scope to do that in this case. So anyway, this panel here actually flips up so you could leave your radiator or fans installed um, depending on the length of the tube of course and uh, that comes away so we're gradually peeling away these layers on the um, shift XT here and flipping it around you'll see very obviously that it is a sandwich style case so you have the GPU chamber on the right and the motherboard chamber on the left I believe it's around 72 millimeters or thereabouts of CPU height clearance that's fairly decent for a sandwich style case, but obviously you're not going to fit any kind of tower cooler in there, even a, an, an Arctic Freezer 7X or i13X or something that's way too big to fit in here. You are looking at a low profile cooler only, which might well restrict your processor choice unless, again, you do some undervolting and that kind of stuff. So the GPU chamber, though, pretty decent confirming that triple slot compatibility which is not something the NZXT H1 has and I think you get around two, uh, 334 millimeters of length clearance as well. If you do go the custom water cooling route, good place for a combined pump and reservoir is down here above the SSD tray that you've got down here. Um, power supplies obviously go down there. You're looking at SFX or SFXL. Um, Fantex recommends SFX for obvious reasons that you're giving yourself a little bit more room to play with or just uh, taking up less of the internal volume with the power supply. Obviously, it depends on your own preferences. If you do go the custom water killing route as well, you have this little cutout that you might want to run tubing from one side to another. Um, certainly, if you're got, a, got a, a radiator in the roof as well as fans there might be enough room underneath depending on what your what setup you have but it's just nice to have that little cutout so you can obviously it's mainly for routing your graphics card power cables through but it can also be used for routing your tubing across as well PCI Express 4.0 riser cable nice and chunky and I believe that is uh, fully shielded or double shielded or something like that I read in the um, in the press release and uh, your motherboard obviously goes here uh, again that panel fully removable and we're pretty much getting to the end of the internal tour of the chassis and the final piece of the puzzle is down here some nice little bit of engineering by Fantex is you just simply push the case forwards having unscrewed a thumb screw out of that hole down there and then the whole section just just live lifts out like so which is pretty handy when you want to just build your PC into this um, either with or without cooling installed you can probably afford to attach your radiator and all-in-one liquid cooler while it's like this and then just mount the radiator um, to the flip out section so this whole section here obviously you can just remount the uh, radiator and or fan mount here just slot that back in and then that's basically your pc there and everything else bolts on around it so i kind of like that it's uh, that's pretty cool and if we have a look around the internals of this case again as you can see there isn't really anywhere else to stow a another radiator unlike a lot of other cases i mean you could potentially have something in here if you shift the power supply around um, obviously you'll need to crack the dremel open if you're going to be doing something there but nice to see that there is a place to actually stow some cables under here. So if I just uh, boost the brightness on this for you guys, you can see that the uh, the front panel cables are neatly stowed under there. So a little bit of room for a few extra cables and there's like a cable anchor clip here as well for that very purpose. So that is pretty much it for the Shift XT. 
And what we'll do now is uh, carry on with the thermal testing and building a PC inside and make some conclusions at the end. Moving on to the cooling now then, and we have a dead heat in terms of the CPU cooling with an all-in-one liquid cooler, basically pushing both the Fantex Shift XT and the Lianli PCQ58, which was the case I chose to pair up against it. Basically, both of them using their maximum cooling potential with a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. Both cases have vents on the side, and essentially it's gonna come down to whatever uh, processor cooler you end up using as to which case performs the best. Obviously you do have a decent amount of CPU cooler headroom in the Fantex case, although it depends on whether the cooler that you're buying is actually going to be compatible with your Mini ITX motherboard. So for example, I tried to fit the Noctua NH-L12S, uh, I believe it was, and that wouldn't fit on the Gigabyte motherboard that I was using so even though that was just within the height limit it was too big to actually fit on the motherboard so as per usual things are going to depend on what will fit in your particular case and maximizing the cooling potential but if you're looking at water cooling the case or liquid cooling shall i say um, there's pretty much no difference uh, between the two they both seem to provide an all-in-one liquid cooler of the caliber of the 240 millimeter version uh, I've got here. They both seem to provide um, coolers of those caliber with decent airflow. Moving on to the GPU temperature, and this is maybe more indicative of what you might see with a, uh, uh, an air cooler as well. So the ventilation in the Fantax case being slightly better than that on the Lianli PCQ58, at least with the AMD Radeon 6600 XT that I was using in this test. So that card, sort of a, a mid-range card, it can get toasty if you are if you starve it of airflow, like any product can really. Um, dual fans, a reasonably large cooler, but even here there was definitely a difference between the two cases. The Fantex Shift XT just had a couple of degrees slightly lower temperature, um, peak GPU temperature than the Lianli PCQ58. Um, I wouldn't really choose between the cases based on this temperature, but it's just proving really that the Fantex uh, vent design, at least when the case is in its expanded mode, is going to be more than capable of handling graphics cards without uh, basically starving them of air. So those side vents doing a decent job of keeping your graphics card cool as well. So what do we make of the Fantex Evolve Shift XT then? Well, I really, really, really like the aesthetics of this case. I think it looks fantastic in silver. I haven't seen it in person in black, but I'm sure it looks just as great there as well. But I'm just really, really sold on the design. I love the way that the 
uh, RGB panel at the front is, is visible uh, through the front section and the way that it gets larger and smaller depending on whether you have the uh, extended mode or the compact mode going on. But I just really, really like the aesthetics. I like the, uh, the grille design. And it's very obviously a Fantex case as well. I think everybody can agree on that. It's definitely got those, those aesthetic cues that, uh, be that betray its manufacturer. And I think in terms of cooling, it's definitely there. I think it's up with any other case that's going to have a, a vented panel. Obviously no fans in the box, so you're gonna have to kit it out yourself. Of course, you don't need fans in the, in the super compact mode, but in the medium and fully extended versions there are two 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter mounts to work with and yeah i'm just really really sold on the design and i think given the extensive amount of aluminium that's involved the rgb lighting and a pci express 4.0 riser cable i don't think the price is too unreasonable so comparing it to the competition then i think both in terms of price and volume uh and also the style of the case, the Lianli PCQ58 is probably its closest competitor because that case obviously also a sandwich style case. It's a similar volume. It can, it's pretty much limited to an all-in-one liquid cooler of the 240 millimeter flavor out of the box. And I think it's a toss up between the two for me. I think if the, for those that prefer the cleaner look, the Q58 is definitely the way to go. Um, I like some of its uh, great features as well, like the fan hub in the front, the, the sort of hot swappable um, SSD mount in there as well, and just kind of a slightly cleaner looking case that looks fantastic in white as well. Uh, reasonably easy to work with as well, although because you can dismantle the Shift XT, this is e an equally easy, to case, easy case to work with. And obviously you have the flexibility of making it smaller as well. And I should add that it is significantly smaller, both in terms of size and volume, obviously, than the Q58 in its compact mode. And indeed it's slightly shorter in its uh, medium extended mode as well. So in terms of hardware compatibility, obviously you're getting three uh, triple slot support. Obviously that's something that the Q58 offers as well, but you do have the flexibility of switching between super compact mode and extended modes. And I think overall Fantex has done a pretty good job of doing that without making too many compromises. There were always going to be compromises in terms of having a case that's out of the box flexible in terms of its volume and shifting panels around and all that kind of stuff. It's never going to be as efficient as something that's as you know niche and focused on a specific layout like the Q58 or the Ghost or any of the other uh, kind of fixed layout um, very sleek mini ITX cases that are out there. That's that's not really what this case is about. Um, and really that's not what most of Fantex, Fantex's cases are, around, uh, are about either. So the things that I don't like about this case, well, I guess for me being a water cooling, uh, a water cooling fan, uh, I've been, you know, my main PC has been water cooled for like the last 20 years or something. Um, and most of those have been mini ITX. It's very, very limited here in terms of custom liquid cooling. You're not really going to be able to fit more than a 240 millimeter radiator in here. I guess there might be space, depending on the, the depth of your graphics card, to fit something in the side with a bit, with a bit of modding. But out of the box, there are a lot of other cases out there, um, perhaps with slim fans and slim radiators, for example, that can fit more inside them than the Shift XT, which is a little bit disappointing given its volume. I kind of like the, the, the flexibility, but I guess for me, I might have liked to have seen slightly a slightly different design inside to cater for that extra hardware, even if it meant losing the, uh, the vertical flexibility. Um, I think everything else is, is pretty much there. A sandwich style, it's not for everybody, but I kind of like it just from the fact that I usually water cool my PCs, so I'm not too fussed about CPU cooler height. Here, the fact that it's got a reasonable amount of CPU cooler height is gonna be useful only if you can find a cooler that is gonna be compatible with your, with your actual Mini ITX motherboard. And a lot of them, certainly the ones that stretch up to the 72 millimeter height limit of this case aren't gonna work with a lot of high-end Mini ITX motherboards out there like the Noctua NHL12S that I tried earlier. So for me, I think it's 
it's kind of in its own niche. I like the flexibility, but it's not going to be as refined as something that specifically uh, deals with its own niche in terms of allowing for water cooling support or all-in-one liquid, liquid coolers or just sticking to air cooling. It's never going to be as efficient and uh, using its volume as, as well as it can in that situation because it is flexible. It has to be able to, to move those panels around. But Fantex has done a great job, as I say, in, in offering that feature without making too many compromises. Cooling is good. I think the price is reasonable. It would be interesting to see how much the bundle that Fantex has promised will cost as well because obviously the 240 uh, millimeter liquid cooler that I used in this test seems to perform really, really well. And Fantex bringing out a, uh, a new range of SFX PSUs is really interesting too, given the, given the uh, company's caliber or, or history, should I say, of uh, use of producing many ITX cases. So I think it's a fantastic case, maybe not quite as flexible in some areas as we'd hoped, but definitely flexible in terms of catering its volume and cooling potential to your needs. Reasonably expensive, but it is clad in aluminium. And if you're not too fussed about shed loads of RGB lighting and tempered glass, then it is potentially the case for you. So I would like to thank Fantex for sending over this sample. Don't forget to check out my other reviews and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. And don't forget to check out the description for all my links to social media, all the hardware that I've used in this case, and lots of lots of other mini ITX related and water cooling related videos in my channel as well. So don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon.